So here is the EFA, which is the inverted F antenna. Um, so I want to discuss that and explain why this is an antenna and why it radiates. So first, uh, it's called an inverted F. So you have a think about an F. If you flipped it over and turned it on its side, you could change it into this shape. So basically, an EFA is this inverted F that is fed at one of the arms here. Uh, has a top arm that goes this way, a shorting arm that goes to the main ground plane here. So this EFA sits on top of a large ground plane with this F-shaped arm rising out of the top. Um, the dimensions here, uh, this ground plane is of length L1. We have a height here and then a length, uh, total length of this arm up here, L2. And we'll see this L1 tends to want to be about lambda over 4 and the length of, from the source to the end of the uh, arm up here tends to be a little bit less than uh, lambda over 4. So why is this thing an antenna and why does it radiate? So first, to understand it, um, let's look at the structure without this shorting arm over here. So this is a all metal here and then just air, some non-conducting dielectric here. So without this shorting arm right on the side, we kind of have this structure. And this structure you can think of as a, kind of a evolved dipole antenna. So recall a dipole antenna is, looks like this, uh, just a source with two arms. So you can imagine if you grew this arm and then bent this arm over, you would have this shaped uh, antenna. And so as it turns out, if you build something like this, you'll tend to have uh, a capacitive impedance. And by putting a parallel inductance in there, you can match this antenna right up. So it's a structure that's going to support radiation and also be impedance matched. So you kind of want to have an inductor right here. So instead of putting a lumped inductor in there, so like lumped elements, uh, components, especially inductors, tend to have high loss. So instead of doing that, we'll just put a length of a thin trace of copper tape that goes uh, to, from this base ground plane up to the top. And this will actually uh, form an inductor. So the inductance, uh, L, is determined by the length of this wire and also how thick it is. So to increase the inductance, you can make the arm longer or thinner, or both. So this is kind of a dipole, but it's also a dipole that's uh, mixed with a slot. So you recall the slot antenna, it's something like this on some ground plane. And we have a short arm over here that represents an inductance and a longer arm over here which represents a capacitance and then you have the radiation resistance of the antenna itself and it radiates when these two cancel out and recall that the voltage distribution across here goes like this such that it's a peak in the center and the current is out of phase and so the impedance at this point in the center of the slot is actually infinite uh, which means no current flows but there's a voltage so instead of making a whole slot we actually cut it in the center and then we still have this exact same radiation structure uh, and the antenna itself doesn't know the difference because it's an open circuit here and this is an open circuit so electrically the antenna thinks it's the same so this antenna here is kind of a mixture of a slot antenna, half a slot antenna with a ground plane below it and also evolved from a dipole antenna. So that is an EFA, and that's where it comes from. So recall, for a dipole, the currents are adding in phase, which uh, give rise to the radiation. And for a slot antenna, if you imagine this imaginary part, it's this voltage across the gap that's adding in phase. Uh, in either case, both of these antennas are vertically polarized. The polarization is in this direction. So for this antenna, you're going to have the voltage adding in phase under here, and you also have this current adding in phase here. So the net polarization is going to be along this axis, 
And it's kind of the combination of a current radiator and a voltage radiator, um, which makes it a pretty interesting uh, and useful antenna. And so you can start to see where these lengths come from. So for a dipole arm, you need this to be uh, lambda over 4. How wide it is isn't as critical. This width here isn't as critical as the length. It tends to want to be as long at least as this. So you can kind of get this field distribution here. And remember for a dipole in the center, or a slot antenna, this is also lambda over 2. So if you cut it in the middle, such that it's an open circuit, we'd want it lambda over 4. So you can kind of see where this distance comes from. So the EFA is kind of the merger of the straight dipole antenna and a slot antenna. And it's polarized exactly as both these antennas, vertically polarized in this direction. As such, then, its bandwidth is very similar to a dipole or a slot, which is typically on the order of 7%. So we have our basic EFA structure. Again, here's the... You can call this a shorting arm or something like that. It's just a parallel inductor. So we have this arm. Now what's interesting is, suppose we want this antenna to be dual band. So we want it to operate at some frequency F1 and another frequency F2. Now let's suppose F2 is, you know, at least uh, twice as large as F1. So we have two, we want this antenna to work uh, in a region where two frequencies that are fairly well separated. Well, if we wanted to make this antenna to work at F1, let's say this works at F1, and we wanted it to work at F2 as well, we can kind of add another longer arm. So this, the longer arm represents the lower resonant frequency. The shorter arm is going to give rise to the uh, higher frequency. So this actually, this structure here, would represent a dual band EFA. So this structure has the parallel inductor here in the ground plane and it makes for a long EFA, so lower resonant frequency. So you forget about that and just think about the shorter arm with the parallel inductor on the ground plane. This also makes an EFA. So if your two resonances are separated by a large enough uh, frequency, you're able to get a dual band EFA uh, using this approach.